All right, guys, we're going to do a 15 plus 10 against an alleged beginner and try and spot some beginner like errors. Okay, I'm going to play an e4 opening. Let's see what we get. Scandinavian, let's accept. I don't normally accept. Normal moves are the queen comes out to take, or you can have this modern opening. Here the queen's come out. We can now develop the knight with tempo. Sending the queen off. There she goes, all the way back. Okay, I guess I can develop my other knight. I've got d4. This is fine. The knight doesn't attack that. This knight, if it comes out, would attack it. I can bring out one bishop here, or I can bring out my my other bishop, maybe. Uh, what to do, what to do? Let's fianchetto this bishop. Okay, I'm not too worried about that move. My knight's not really defending anything, it's controlling the center, but if black wants to trade off their bishop, they can. Then we'll try and keep the board open. Right, out comes the knight. So we have two attackers on this pawn, but we also have two defenders. So that's all good. Let's castle. That might castle as well. Opponent's playing very solid so far. So the idea with these videos is that I don't play any opening that I would normally play. So Scandinavian accepted is not usual for me. All right, they've castled. Let's uh, continue developing our minor pieces. This one pins the knight on the queen. Might get kicked, in which case I can't come back here because I've pushed my pawn to g3. That would trap my bishop after this. So I'm going to come back Let's come back here, defend this pawn a third time. If I'd have come back here, it would have blocked my queen's defense of that pawn, and there would have been two attackers, and only one defender in the form of this knight. I might kick this bishop. This is a slightly weakening move. At some point, I might even think about Sacrificing my bishop there. Let, let's kick this guy. And see what his intentions are. Okay, he's retreated all the way back. Alright, so we've got ideas now. Maybe queen to here or here. Probably to here. With the idea of maybe sack, pawn takes, queen takes, knight comes in. But then I'll need to eradicate this knight in order to have a checkmate idea. Um, this knight's not really doing an awful lot right now, so I might bring him around somewhere, say to here. That means this pawn is now super well defended. It's got four defenders. If I play c3, that would be five defenders. Opponent hasn't developed their queen's bishop yet. Where's this knight going? Does he want to come here? I could prevent that idea with pawn to b3. Where's it going to go from there? It wants to attack this pawn. Okay, let's push b3 to prevent that plan. c4 might now be an idea. Queen defends that. As the knight has now moved from c6, it's no longer attacking this. Right. Let's lift my queen. I'm now attacking this. Also got now two attackers looking at h6. 
I still need to remove this knight. Okay, now, also notice there's an opportunity down there. So I could So if I move this knight here, or if I allow this pawn to take, I can take with a discovered attack on the rook. So I'm kind of okay with that. So I'm going to centralize my rook. Opponent is not playing like a beginner. So anywhere this knight can move with a threat is a double advantage because... Okay. Hmm. If I push my pawn, it hits this knight. It can't go there and it can't go there. not time to do this I don't think I need reinforcements over there so I can do this now with an immediate attack on the rook that's a revealed attack or discovered attack from there my knight could cover this square so this then we hit the knight and the knight can't go back there so let's do that, let's try that. <coughs> Knights move to a more aggressive square. Now it's in the center of the board. It's also in my opponent's half of the board. Okay, does black spot the threat on the rook? Rook can't go to here or to here, notice, because, well, in fact, first I need to remove this knight because it's guarding that square. So let's say the rook goes to one of these squares. Oh, well that just hangs the knight, does it not? And I'm still attacking the rook. Also, <clears throat> the knight has now abandoned the defense of this h7 square, so takes, takes, queen takes. Right. Am I worried about this pawn? If I take, the knight will take, and then my queen needs to move, which she could do. But at least if the knight does move, it's no longer defending this. I'm also still attacking the rook. So here I could move my queen and attack the knight, for example. Something like this means I'm attacking the knight and still attacking this rook. I think that looks all right. This pawn's still very well defended. Four defenders, and I'm attacking the rook. Knight could go back there. <coughs> could drop my bishop back, maybe. Line up with the queen to threaten the knight more. I think the first thing is just to snatch off the rook. Kittens are all awake. So the knight can't go there because of my pawn. Can't go there. Can't go there. Can't go there. Can't go there. So that's really the only square for the knight. I expect it to go back here. Black can't really defend the knight either. I'm going to take two pawn moves to defend, that's too slow. Oh, right, we're surrounded by ninjas now. Surrounded by ninjas is a little ninja. Okay, there he goes. Right, let's have this rook. 
the bishop moves for the queen to capture, the queen then stops defending this knight as well. There you go. So we're currently up two pieces. My bishop also has a nice escape route. There's nothing that can block it without getting itself traded off. Okay, I'll just snatch that, I think. Assume pawn takes, and then my bishop can safely retreat. And we're doing absolutely fine. Um... The bishop's not under attack yet, so I could just could just grab the pawn. Yeah, that's the reason why not. Can't take there because of the bishop. I think I kind of like my bishop on this diagonal to support a, a checkmate attack. Okay, so that, that's a discovered attack on the bishop. I could come here. But my queen's currently undefended, so I'm going to stick my bishop, bishop back here. Notice this pawn hangs. My queen and my rook are in line. So I kind of need to be careful about that. That would be a decent move. I have to drop back here to defend the knight, because that's currently otherwise not defended. Rook fe1 is also an idea. Oh, we're doing fine here. I'm up a rook and a piece. Rook and a knight. My opponent does have two quite active bishops. There we go. It's a good move. We drop back. Might move this rook here. I have a check, but it's a bit pointless. The king moves here, then doesn't really do much. Could also drop my bishop back here as well. Face off with this bishop. Okay, let's do that. I have a free pawn. I can, I can handle the loss of a pawn. It'd be good to get rid of this bishop pair. Just try and simplify down where I'm going to be up a rook at least. Okay, they've saved the bishop. This pawn is now in harm's way. Um, there's a free pawn there. Then queen takes. I think that's worth having. Do I have to worry about this? Bishop there doesn't worry me. Okay, grab the pawn. But the story of this game really is... Ooh! Ooh! Checkmate threats. Okay. Now this doesn't work because the queen comes right into the corner with mate. So, interesting times. I think I have to push f3. Queen can't take because rook takes queen. Might also do this. Or, I think that's okay. Up a lot of material. This pawn still hangs. This is an idea, and if the, oh, okay, all right, my knight can come in now and attack the queen. Also attacks this, also this square. The knight's currently otherwise unemployed, so that looks useful. The queen needs to defend this pawn. So 
it's nice to see he's trying some tactics. I have this, this is a fork on the rook and the bishop. The rook will probably move, but I get the bishop, which is also undefended otherwise. So the rook has to move and defend the bishop. Okay, so this move is still on. Let's do it, let's get rid of material. Still happy with this, I might might think about moving my, in fact my bishop could come back and defend this pawn again, but it's not really an issue. They push, might be an issue. I think if, yeah, if they push that pawn, I'll probably bring my bishop back. So if takes, bishop takes, hitting the queen and the bishop. Okay, let's get rid of that one with check. Rook will recapture. Okay. This move as well. And it hits the queen and also lines up with the king, quite like that. Let's do that. When the queen moves, it means this pawn is pinned. And that means that this pawn is not defended by that pawn. So it depends where the queen goes. If the queen retreats up here, for example, I can grab that pawn for free because this one cannot legally recapture without putting the king in check. There we go, so this is now on. And I also defend this pawn as well. And I'm threatening to come here with check. Rook blocks, I can grab another pawn. And bishop can take on here. Definitely got ideas. I feel like if I can get rid of that last bishop, then we should be home and dry. Does that work? All right. My queen is now on prees, so I have to do something with her. Because just drop back here, just get defensive. I've got any, oh, I've got a good check, actually I do, there we go. That hits the king and the queen, so now the queen that's undefended must trade herself off. That's exactly what I want, because I'm so far up in material. That's going to leave me with two bishops and two rooks against one bishop and one rook. I also have two more pawns in my opponent. So queen takes is now forced. I recapture. This pawn is defended. Probably lift my king up. Keep it on a dark square. Sorry about all the background noise. Kittens are all over the place. Okay, and resigns. Okay, so what happened there? What happened? And the key question is, why did they lose? Very normal openings, been seen millions of times. I'm just developing my minor pieces. Pawn in the center. Prepare to do something with this bishop. I couldn't really think of a, a great square for that bishop to go on. I didn't really want to put it there and block this. So I thought, let's fear in Keto. And castle. Get castled early. Generally a good idea. A lot of beginners fail to do that. Pinning the knight. So this is a developing move that comes with a, a constraint on my opponent. It means this knight can't move. Now they push the pawn which, as I said, is slightly weakening. I retreat and just solidify. So my bishop there is on a square where it's self-defended, also defends this pawn and defends that pawn. Kick, retreat. Now I'm swinging my knight around because it didn't seem to be doing much there. 
I mean, it's, it's okay, it's controlling some of the center. And now we're just trying to prevent our opponent's ideas a bit. I didn't want my opponent to come in here. White is slightly better, but material is equal. We've only lost a pawn each. Now I lift my queen with an attack. Attacking is a good idea. They break in the center, I ignore, centralize. And black's doing fine here. Now this is a discovery on the rook, and our position is completely equal. But they miss the attack and blunder a piece. And that happens. You've just always got to be aware of what your opponent's just done. And it could be a complete blunder. There we go, we trade off. Attack the knight again. And grab the free rook. And trade off. Because now we're up in material, we just want to simplify. That pawn was free. Bishop retreats. Queen defends the knight. Now we have bishop tension. Another free pawn. There is a threat here. This was a bit of an error, probably on my part. Because you see, my, my Fianchetto bishop is now off gallivanting around the board. Whereas if it was here, it would retain its kind of defensive role. So I'm forced to respond. Now I attack the queen. Whoa. Okay. I hope you saw that. <laughs> Could have won the queen. But instead I traded my knight off for a bishop. Okay, and th this is a this is a tactic. Spotting that this pawn is in an absolute pin by my bishop, which means that anything it thinks it's defending it isn't, because it can't move off that square. And now we simply force off the trade of queens and that's the end of the game. So, definitely a blunder there on my part to <laughs> miss that I was attacking his queen. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. He also missed it. But there you go. You know, I didn't do anything particularly clever there. Um, didn't do particularly brilliantly. I'd say I probably had a, a 1200 game. Ah, oh, it won't, won't show me the analysis. I, I can log in and see the analysis, but... Uh, and that's that's all you have to do to beat a beginner. I, I think I'd say this player was was over one thousand or around the one thousand mark. But there we go. I'll, I'll try and log in and see if it will show me the analysis of the game. It doesn't always work. There we go. And now. Yeah, so it's not giving me the game review option, and the analysis button seems to be broken at this point as well. But we're doing okay. Yeah, the analysis doesn't doesn't seem to work there. The other thing that I can do as well is I can um, I can hit share, grab the PGN, then go to a new analysis board, and this probably will work. You can add here and click review. And now it will show me the game review. So place your bets on guess the ELO. I'm hoping I was over a thousand. <clears throat> okay, 85 for me, but <coughs> opponent did really well there with 79. And it's given me 1800 and opponent 1550. How about that? Well, this was no beginner. And the big blunder on White's part was, yeah, just dropping the knight. And and this was an excellent move, apparently. <laughs> Go figure. Go figure. Knight takes d5 was a better move. Actually... It has them completely equal. How about that? Knight g6 was just as good. So it was not, wasn't a blunder at all. Both 8.55. Well, I never. So there you go. The mysteries of chess. So I hope that was useful.
a few lot. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like these games. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to Chess Boot Camp, and I'll see you soon.